I think our team looks more this year, more like an SEC team with length and athleticism. And uh, it's looking forward to, to getting started. With all of Rebel Nation's sights set on breaking the bracket come March, Coach Davis's team must turn their focus to what is in front of them as they discover their new formula for success. Here we go, you know I've been waiting on this day all summer. Can't wait to get to it with my dogs, man. You can play hard, you can dub, bring it home, you know? From scratch, man. This is what we started at last year. We're going to finish. We're finish better than what we did, man. Three and Tyree, a run through steel. He'll go in and jam it home. Trapped, ripped away by Buffett. Steps around him, Euro style. There's another one this time for Austin Crowley. Gaps goes in, leaves it for C. Franco Miller is going to dribble out the clock. 65 52. Ole Miss takes down Seattle to improve to 4 and 0. Soaring into the second season of the Kermit Davis era with four wins stowed away safely. A series of tough matchups awaited the Rebels within the concrete jungle. Uh, it's my first time in New York. And it's really my first time, too. Really trying to try this hot dog stand right now. Let's try to find some good food in New York. The square X, 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 X. Enjoy it, man. New York is the, New York is the move. I don't know if I'm hungry, but it's pizza. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We'll be right back. We're gonna get it warmed up. We'll be right back. <laughs> the ice is about falling off of it. Wee! What's that, dude? With all the play out of the way, it was time to get down to business at the courts found within the headquarters of the NBA's Brooklyn Nets. I called my brother and all my other family members. That was the most beautiful setting I've ever been in that had anything to do with basketball. That was that was terrific. I've never seen anything like that before. Seeing something like that that is on the top of the floor and you can see the view for from the like from the facility all the way to the city. Oh, that was the best feeling ever for especially for me because I never experienced anything like that before. Uh, that was my first time being there and, uh, and seeing it in person. Um, you know, that's something that must be amazing to um, be able to go there as a pro and, you know, work out in that facility every day with that type of skyline and that motivation, just mindset while you're working out. That, that's amazing. So that was a great experience. Make 31 shot in three minutes. The best out of all. As practice reached near its end, the team would gather to the side to listen to the wise words from Randy Williams, a close friend and personal trainer to NBA superstar Kevin Durant. When you think you work hard, you understand this. It's a, it's a, it's a lot of other people that's trying to get your spot. So you got to, in mental toughness, key too. You know what I'm saying? You got to really lock in and you got to concentrate, dude, because understand this. Where the head coach at, man? He ble hey, this is a good dude. He gave y'all opportunity. You feel what I'm saying? Understand this, when you're done playing with basketball, dude, you gotta go to that real world. Some of y'all know, some of y'all people's in that real world. And some of that stuff not good. 
So understand this, when you're around this right now, you should lock in, dude, this is good. You in a good controlled environment, look where you at. Some of y'all probably never thought y'all come here. And he sent us to a message that like, you know, we gotta take advantage of what we have right now, listen to the coaches, you know, work hard, cause I promise you one day this will go on. So they, they understand this, when you're around older people, they don't wanna see y'all fail because they already been there. So take advice from me and understand it's like, dude, he already lived life, he lived life. They older than me, they know what life is. It ain't all about making it to the NBA, dude, because guess what? You can make it to the league, but if you don't know about life, you going it ain't gonna work. This this basketball is uh becomes more and more of a business every level you go up. You know, that's something I definitely understand. And um, just having that chip on your shoulder that he was just trying to, you know, instill in all of us and, you know, not taking for granted the good situation that we're in right now. After hearing that from a guy that is really close to that superstar, that made me start taking things very, very serious. You know, that was a great speech and something I'll, you know, take with me in my career. We are in Brooklyn, New York on this Thanksgiving Eve, our first semifinal. Pits the Ole Miss Rebels against the Penn State Nittany Lions. It's time, man. It's time. We finna get some respect. Before the ball was even tipped off, the Rebs would suffer their first setback. We were at practice today. They lost their starting small forward, Luis Rodriguez. Listen now, boy, Luis already. Well, we gotta, gotta pick it up for him. Got your back, brother. This is a big season for Pat Chambers and his Nittany Lions because the expectation is that this is an NCAA basketball team. Guard him early, make these guys make tough moves. He's just without foul. Entering the game already a man down due to injury, the Rebels would struggle to find their footing early. Here's Watkins on the takeaway, and look out. The big man throws it down. Penn State has made its last six shot attempts. Penn State's big play blueprint had Ole Miss searching for an identity that would begin to take form towards the end of the first frame. Buffin, strong move, oh. men at the rim though. Watkins with another block, staying with it. Buffin gets the two. Hinson, quick first step right to the rim. He's shown what was expected out of him. He scored 15 in that loss. He's got nine already in a starting role tonight. KJ Buffin. Finds the open man, Hinson, for three. See, nice job to rid himself of the defender and lay it in. Byron Jones with four on the shot clock. It goes out of bounds off the hands of Lamar Stevens. Here comes the junior from Irmo, South Carolina. We'll see how they respond at halftime and uh, as we start the second half. With no time to hang their heads, senior Brian Tyree would be the first one to dust himself off and lead the charge from the depths of defeat. And here is Brian Tyree out of St. Joseph's High School, Somerset, New Jersey. And as mentioned, about 50 miles from here at Barclays Center. You know, I didn't play the first half like I wanted to uh, even. When we came out in the second half, um, just heard the cheers, heard all the support. It kind of gave us a second boost. Tyree, little step back. Maybe that'll get him going. Long two. The things that you guys see in the game, you probably don't even believe what we see in practice. The, the offensive machine, the type of scoring um, tears he can go on is unbelievable. A good sign. Tyree making a couple shots. His first four points tonight. Buffett with the slam. 7-0 run for Ole Miss. Trying to make it a ball game once again. And it's going to be interesting to see how the Nittany Lions play with a big lead, but they haven't really handled that lead well since the end of the first half. He can do that. Blake Hinson can really shoot it. It's good that he's back. Here we go. A dozen straight points for Ole Miss. I don't know if we really realized how many Ole Miss people were there until you know, we got down 21, it started coming back, and you could feel them right behind us. It just meant a lot to know that the Ole Miss crowd was there with us like the whole time we were down. We ate up energy from each other, everybody in the whole stadium who was wearing 
red or navy blue, we was eating up that energy. And the folks who made the trip from Oxford, Mississippi are starting to feel it. Tyree. Nothing Watkins could do about that one. I'll tell you what, you get it within eight with five to go, you are in this game. Stepping into a three. Williams! Good, good ball movement. Stepping up big on a big stage in Brooklyn. This would be crazy. Penn State had a 20 point lead. Rockington off last, no. Ole Miss with a chance to tie. Blocking foul, cut the basket, and Bree and Tyree can tie things up at the line. What a second half for the senior from New Jersey. All the way back from 21 down. Take a look. Who ties the game. 70 apiece. Mom and dad love it. Myron Jones denied. Shot clock at 12. After completely swatting away their early deficit, it was time for each side to turn to the prides of the packs in hopes of the final blow. The senior from Philly, a couple of fakes, steps through, and the finger roll puts Penn State back in front. Really good defense, too. Tyree. Squares it at 72. Stevens for the lead. Tyree ties it right yeah. back. All knotted up, the resilient Rebels would need just one more opportunity to snatch a victory out from thin air. Dangerous pass taken away by Buffin. Whoa! And he missed the layup. Still tied, and a foul is called. Wow! Wow! So the foul went against Myron Jones that will send Bryce Williams to the free throw line. Very calm and cool. Oh, he's, he's been calm and cool all night, this kid. Both teams are out of timeout, so the Nittany Lions are going to have to go down two. Whips it to the corner. Dread, air ball, out of bounds. Ole Miss possession. Long pass. Clock runs, and the clock runs out. But it is one unbelievable comeback. There you see Ole Miss outscored Penn State 43-20 over the final 16 minutes of the game, down 21 late in the first half. Kermit Davis's club gets what will be a bubblicious win. That's something right there, man. I've been doing a long time. That's something. You're down and out. Found our culture. Just kept fighting different lineups, fought, fought. You got it right there. I mean, that, that's a hell of that. That is a nothing but a player's win. Yep. You did that. You had nothing. I'm telling you, you did that. You did it. You did it. You hung together. You did it through all the adversity. That's what team, when you start owning your own team, for the last about 15 minutes, you guys own exactly your own team. I love y'all, boys. Family on three. One, two, three. Hey! Hey! Woo! Good. Sure appreciate everybody here. I know we get lucky. We get to have our families here for Thanksgiving. Like I said, Bree, and a lot of times we don't. And so I know I wish all you guys help and happiness for your for your families that are that are back home. You miss your mom's cooking, your grandma's cooking. But I've been away from it for quite some time now, so I, I've been able to get used to it. But it's, I, of course, you can't forget about the good food you're missing out on. We play food, we been low gotta eat. You feel me? They play to the max. If it wasn't for them, it really wouldn't. It, it would really be a sad moment because you're away from your family and you're just you. You would be all you would be dwelling on how you aren't with your family at that time, but. You have another family, you know, and you really have, you get to have fun with at that time. Hold on, I'm gonna show you my plate. Ham, and turkey, and dressing. I'm gonna show you my plate. Turkey, and dressing. I'm gonna show you my plate.
ham, turkey, dressing, a half e roll. He couldn't wait to sit down to eat, and potato. I had to get the pumpkin pie, uh, you know, it's not, not as good as my grandmother's, but you know, hey, old dude, just enjoy being around, all my brothers here, and uh, happy Thanksgiving. No Black Friday deals in the Barclays Center as the rebels exchanged the bright lights of the big city for the comforts of the Tui Center. The home away from home, which features the main staff offices, weight room, and practice courts, also served as a safe haven during a very difficult time for several members of the Tui basketball family. And we begin with the relentless threat from Hurricane Dorian, rapidly strengthening over the past 24 hours to a monster Category 5 storm, striking the Bahamas with 185 mile per hour winds. You know, I've been experiencing hurricanes ever since I was a little kid, you know, so it's not really something that's, you know, oh my God, it's a hurricane coming, you know, you really just get ready and prepare for it. I've lived through a couple major hurricanes, but we've, I've never had one. I don't recall of one just sitting and zero miles per hour and not moving uh, for 24 hours plus. People are used to it, but they've never seen anything like Doreen, so it was kind of it was kind of difficult knowing you can't do anything and those are the people that are closest to you. Nearly a thousand miles away from home, Ole Miss freshman Franco Miller and Sammy Hunter were joined by junior Valerie Nesbitt and women's head coach Yolette McPhee McEwen as they could only hope for the best during a destructive time of the year back home. Being here during the hurricane is just something that it made me feel, I can't really explain it. It's just like I couldn't, I couldn't do anything. I could just sit down and watch all the devastation and stuff happen without, you know, being able to help, without being able to help my family. It was hard to go to Wade's, go to practice, come back home, and just sit there and think and wonder, knowing you can't talk to them. A communication was kind of spotty. You know, it would be on and off at times. You know, sometimes I'd be on the phone with my mom and it would like disconnect and stuff like that, you know, but it, it, through the whole, throughout the whole hurricane, I think I, I talked with them a lot, so it, it, that really made me feel comfortable. In the wake of Hurricane Dorian, Freeport's Franco Miller Jr. led a relief effort on campus, encouraging the Oxford community to tap into that Southern hospitality. Oh, y'all got food I gotta try and pack these. I'm not a professional packer. Does it matter if we mix the content, though? Who, do, who donated this? Who donated this? Uh, a lady. A lady over there. Thirty-seven minutes, and we got like four or five boxes of stuff. So that's good. Good. Hopefully by seven o'clock, we got no more boxes that we can fill up. So after watching all the devastation that happened and seeing, you know, what took place, I just thought that you know the best way that I could try to do something was just to, you know, gather supplies and gather stuff like that instead of just, you know, doing like a fundraiser and asking people for money, whereas they could just, you know, bring supplies of their own and bring stuff like that. So I, I contacted uh, Jennifer Saxon, you know, she was great. She helped me the whole way. You know, I, a lot of thanks to her and that, that was just, she made it happen for me. You got a shot of Miss Jen. Without her, this wouldn't have been possible. Oh, Franco, that's so uh, sweet that's, of you. That's, oh, that's, guess what? We got, I gotta get a computer because we can order your mom. That, that store probably don't do pickup, but it's another store in Miami Gardens that'll do it. Okay. So there's 2.5. It's, it's 2.5 miles away. Okay. And, and the biggest thing is just, I think show the support and love, and I think a lot of people reached out uh, to Franco. And obviously we had an unbelievable connection with Yo, who already knew the family and really understood the ins and outs of exactly how to you know, to get the goods and supplies to to the island. Music, I got it. Appreciate that job, boys. Appreciate that. Appreciate that, appreciate that. That was pretty good, you know, because it helped my family out a lot. You know, we had like a lot of family members living in my house because they had, you know, pretty much their houses were flooded and they had lost everything. So it was pretty good, you know, to have some stuff just to help immediate family members out. 
for, for Franco to have a heart of gold, man, he's a, he's a great person. To, for him to do that, that was, that was a big thing for our country. He even, he even made the news over there. I was proud to see him take it into his own hands and go after it in the way that he did. Uh, if you've met Franco, he's kind of mellow, but for this, he jumped on it, and it can, you can tell the passion he had for his homeland and just understanding what his parents were going through. Franco has a, obviously a great love for his family. He and his family both have, have an unbelievable love for, for their island and the people that are there. I could tell it when I went there and recruited Franco. And for him to organize it, to see him work along with his fellow teammates, to, you know, with all the types of goods and different things that they sent back to the island of Freeport. And I knew people would come out and, you know, people would support, but I didn't know that would be like that many things that we got. You know, the Ole Miss community was great. A lot of people came out, a lot of teammates even came and supported. You know, so that, that really meant a lot to me for me to help people back home. Community efforts are frequent events as the Mississippi made head coach continues to build a relationship with his new community. You know, what always instilled in me was an old country saying is that you got to root for your community before your community can root for you. And uh, and I think just to be invested and uh, it's something that's always been very important to us wherever we've been. And, uh, I think that Oxford is one of the most giving communities. Ole Miss is one of the most giving universities of their time uh, to different organizations, and, and it's great for your, your, your players. I mean, the, the trip to Le Bonner, the trip to, to Baston's Hospital, you know, for those guys, the interaction with, with young people that maybe aren't quite as fortunate as they are. Uh, the Make Kermit Pay was, was a fun thing for us. I mean, obviously, we got a chance to raise money with the student body. We're going to do it annually and we raised over $10,000, and we hope that to, to really, really, really grow. And it was just fun. It was fun to see our players interact with the students. And then, you know, how our uh, university reacted, you know, with, with Franco's uh, thing in the Bahamas. So all, all those things have just been, been great for our team. from Bure on the historic Oxford Square. This is Rev Talk. We do have on our show tonight Rebel Head Coach Kermit Davis. <laughs> yeah, Butler's outstanding team. Tomorrow night it's Johnny Newman night for yep. the matchup with Butler, an outstanding team, uh, probably the best non-conference opponent we've got to deal with. Yeah, and we've had some good ones. Yeah. I mean, I don't know who's better. I mean, they're just built. I mean, they got ranked 24th today and deservedly so. And I think they're going to have a great chance to win the Big East. They're a really, really good team. And we need a lot of people to come. You know, hopefully that it'll be a, a great, great crowd that on a Tuesday night people are come and, and see a ranked basketball team. That's why we scheduled it. Even in the face of a perennial contender surrounded by a sea of powder blue, there is nothing that can keep redshirt transfer guard and Oxford's own Jarkel Joyner from shining his own particular light on any situation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bryce, they got me mic'd up. Blake is my twin for y'all who didn't know. They got me mic'd up, twin. Yeah. Yeah, he's mic'd up over there. Yeah, you on the camera. I'm mic'd up right now. They got me mic'd up, you feel me? <laughs> Take between the legs. Take between the legs. Take between the legs. Take between the legs. He said, what you want? <laughs> yeah, let's get it. Business. Straight business. Easy. Pow. Bow. Show me he said he need to cut his tape. I don't know what he's talking about. Being soft, probably. Bucket, Frank. Need him. Bow. I'm going to keep saying it. I'm going to keep saying it. But in the game, you're going to go dunk it. Say you promise. Go between the legs, AC. Between the legs, Blake. <laughs> he said, I don't got that. I keep telling everybody to go between the legs, but they're not listening to me. You look good, bro. Hey, that powder blue tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You tough right now. Uh, a fantastic defensive club holding their opponents to 55 points a game. Ole Miss with seven freshmen on their roster. Only four players were on the team last year. Blake Henson on the drive, gets it over the rim. Check that out. Finish down low. 
Third dunk of the game for Hadeem C. Tyree, a deep three. And he's got it, and Ole Miss is within seven inside a minute to play in the first half. Ole Miss playing good defense and chopping into that Butler lead. In the face of another tough contest, there would be no backing down from this challenge or any that may come in the future. Right, tough scoop, got the roll and one. Seven points now for Brian Tyree. Tough one on one. How about that from Kamar Baldwin? Sammy Hunter knocks down an eight three. Baldwin with a three. He's got three more points. What a night for Kamar Baldwin. Now 19 in the game. Fueled by the sure handed shooting from Butler's top dog, this back and forth battle would not go the home team's way. And after finishing a four-game Thanksgiving feast against top 25 caliber opponents, Kermit's crew was left grateful but hungry for what is to come. We saw the stretch and we, we, we made the stretch out and we knew that, that we were going to play four teams that, that we thought would have great chances not only go to the tournament but win games in the tournament. Uh, three of the four have been ranked. The games that we've been playing, you know, like we haven't been playing our best yet. Like we haven't been playing through the talent we have so far. We get in there, you know. We get in there, I guess, as a team every day, you know. We can compete with with great teams. We can compete with great teams. We're a great team ourselves. New team is what people don't really realize. That's what it's all about, just fighting through adversity, getting better just to get a win in the next game you got. And, you know, not to hang your head and just keep playing because it's a long season and we have a bunch more opportunities to play. Butler, we played well enough to win and uh, just – you know, I thought we got good shots and just kind of one of those things that shots didn't go in, but I thought our team got a little bit better. We have a young team and I have, I'm really excited about the team. I really feel like it's going to be a great one. So it's not the, the results that we wanted for the four games, but the experience that we got, we sure found a lot about our team and hopefully that's going to prepare us for, for this tough SEC schedule that we're about to embark on in January.